Hey everyone! If you've ever wondered why some women struggle to get pregnant and what can be done about it, you're in the right place. Today I'm breaking down the real reasons behind female infertility and more importantly, the solutions. Let's keep it simple and straight to the point. So don't forget to share with friends, like and subscribe to the channel. Okay, so first, infertility in women can come from a few main issues. One, ovulatory problems when eggs aren't released properly. Two, tubule infertility when fallopian tubes are blocked or damaged. Uterine issues like fibroids or scarring. Endometriosis, tissues growing where it shouldn't. And next one is age-related decline, like fewer lower quality eggs. Each of these affects infertility in different ways, but the good news, most of them have solutions. Alright, let's start with one of the most common causes of female infertility problems with ovulation, like PCOS or hormonal imbalance. So basically, if you're not ovulating regularly or at all, pregnancy naturally becomes very difficult. It means no egg, no baby. Why does ovulation stop or get irregular? There are a few reasons, like PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome. The ovaries don't release egg regularly, instead they develop small cycle and hormone levels get out of balance, especially higher levels of androgen. Androgen is a kind of male hormones. Thyroid disorders. Both overreactive and underreactive thyroid can mess with ovulation. High prolactin levels. Prolactin is the hormone that helps product breast milk, but if it's high when you're not pregnant or breastfeeding, it can block ovulation. Low ovarian reserve or premature ovarian failure. This happens when the ovaries start running out of healthy eggs earlier than expected. How doctors fix ovulation problems? Ovulation injection medication includes clomiphene citrate, letrozole, and gonadotrophin injection. The first one, clomiphene citrate. This is usually the first line. It's worked by making your brain release more FSH, the hormone that tells your ovaries to grow and release egg. Litrozole, originally a breast cancer drug, but now used very effectively for ovulation, especially in women with PCOS. It usually tends to have a better success rates than clomic in many cases. Gonadotropic injections. These are stronger FSH or FSH plus LH in injectable form. They directly stimulate the ovaries to produce follicles. These medications are taken during the first half of your cycle. And doctors monitor your response with ultrasound and blood tests to track follicle growth. If PCOS is the reason, metformin and lifestyle changes are solutions. First, metformin is sometimes used, especially if there is insulin resistance. It helps your body respond better to insulin, and that can improve hormone balance and start ovulation naturally. Lifestyle changes are huge. If someone with PCOS is overweight, even just losing 5 or 10% of their body weight can restore regular cycle and ovulation. A healthy diet, regular exercise, stress reduction and good sleep all help balance hormone naturally even without medication if it's thyroid or prolactin problems if tests show thyroid issues then treating that with the right medications like levothyroxine or any other medication can restore ovulation for high prolactin doctors usually prescribe carbagulin or bromocryptin which lower prolactin and allow ovulation to return in low ovarian reserve, this one is more complex. If your AMH is low or FSH is too high, that could mean your egg supply is already declining. In that case, time is critical, and doctors may recommend going straight to IVF or even consider egg freezing, depending on your goals. Alright, let's talk about fallopian tubes and how they can affect fertility. So here's the deal. Fallopian tubes are like the bridge between your ovaries and uterus. Every month after ovulation, the egg travels through one of these tubes, meets the sperm inside the tube, and if everything goes right, that's where fertilization happens. 
Then fertilized egg keep moving to the uterus to implant. Now imagine if those tubes are blocked, damaged or full of fluid. The egg either can't get through or sperm can't reach the egg at all. And even if fertilization does happen, a damaged tube might prevent the embryo from reaching the uterus, which can even lead to an atopic pregnancy. What causes blocked or damaged fallopian tubes? There are a few common reasons. Pelvic inflammatory disease, usually caused by infections like chlamydia or gonorrhea. This infection can scar the tubes. Previous abnormal or pelvic surgeries. Specialist surgeries on the uterus, ovaries, or appendix. Scar tissues can block the tubes. Endometriosis. It can cause inflammation and sticky tissue that warps around the tubes. Dehydrosalpinx. This is when a tube is filled with fluid due to previous infections or damage. And that fluid can be toxic to embryos. Most women don't feel any symptom. That's why doctors use special tests like HSG. It's an x-ray where a dye is pushed through the uterus and tubes. If the dye doesn't pass through, it shows a blockage. Sonohistrography, similar but uses fluid and ultrasound instead of dye and x-ray. Laparoscopy, this is a small surgery with a camera. It gives clearest view and can also treat the problem during the same procedure. Treatment's opinion for blocked or damaged tubes. 1. Surgery. If the blockage is milled or due to adhesion. In some cases, doctors can remove scar tissue or open partially blocked tubes using laparoscopy surgery. If successful, you might be able to conceive naturally afterward. But surgery isn't always the best opinion, especially if the tubes are severely damaged. 2. If both tubes are completely blocked or filled with fluid, then surgery might not help much. In these cases, the recommended treatment is usually IVF because IVF completely bypasses the tubes. One important thing, if you have a hydrosalpinx, doctors often remove or block the tubes before IVF because the toxic fluid inside can actually reduce IVF success rates. So how does IVF help here? Eggs are taken directly from your ovaries, fertilized with sperm in lab outside your body. Then the embryo is transferred directly into your uterus. So even if both tubes are blocked, you can still get pregnant with IVF. The tubes aren't involved at all. Let's talk about the uterus. Because even if you're ovulating perfectly and the tubes are wide open, problems inside the uterus itself can still stop you from getting pregnant or cause miscarriages. What kind of problems are we talking about? The main ones are fibroids, non-cancerous muscle tumors that grow in or around the uterus, polyps, small overgrowth of tissue inside the uterine lining, Adhesions or scarring, often due to previous surgeries, infections, or conditions like Usherman syndrome. Next is uterine septum, the kind of birth defect where a wall of tissue divides the uterus. It's less common but important. These issues can block the implantation of the oven embryo, causes inflammation inside the uterus, it can disturb blood flow to the endometrium, or even cause early miscarriages. So yeah, a healthy uterus matters a lot more than people think. How does doctors find out if your uterus has issues? There are several simple and non-invasive ways to check. Transvaginal ultrasound. First step to check shape, fibrous or thickening. 2. Hysterosonography. Fluid is inserted into the uterus and ultrasound can give a clear picture of the cavity. 3. Hysteroscopy. This is a gold standard. A tiny camera goes inside the uterus to look around directly, and doctors can often treat the problem right then and there. 4. MRI, sometimes used for large fibroids or complex cases. Some treatments option, and they actually work. 1. For polyps, usually small, but they can interfere with implantation or cause irregular bleeding. Treatment is quick and easy. Hystroscopic removal, it's outpatient and no incision and recovery is fast. Once removed, 
change of pregnancy improve almost immediately. 2. Fibroids Not all fibroids cause problem. It depends on size and location. Like submucosal fibroids, those that push into the uterine cavity are the ones most likely to affect fertility. These are also removed by hysteroscopic surgery similar to polyps. Larger fibroids inside the uterine wall or outside may need laparoscopic myomectomy, minimally invasive surgery to remove them. Doctors usually don't touch small fibroids that are outside the uterus unless they are causing pain or pressure. Removing problematic fibroids can drastically improve fertility and reduce miscarriage risk. Infertility can feel frustrating and overwhelming. But with the right diagnosis and the right treatment, many women do go on to have healthy pregnancies. So if you or someone you know is going through this, you're not alone. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with someone who might need it. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.